Let's start off with the fact that the Thanks CBK that has raised the overnight lending rate once again. It's less than 24 hours since they raised it above 13%, now above 15%. What are they doing? I think, uh, Lerato, you must realize that the overnight rate is a function of the interbank rate. Uh, in the circular that they released on Friday, uh, the discount rate is a function of the interbank rate. And as such, as long as the interbank rate is rising, the discount rate is rising. So, I mean, according to our calculations, it should be around 16 point, uh, I mean, at its current level. And that's because of the interbank rate rising to 12.67. So I think what the central bank are trying to tell people is that, uh, I mean, trying to tell the banks is that liquidate your dollars, increase liquidity, and lower the interbank rate to access low rates from the discount window. And all of those attempts, if the banks comply, is it going to shore up the shilling? Because it's still continuing to buck under pressure of exogenous forces, food prices and fuel prices. Um, you are right. I mean, we are seeing exogenous factors driving the shilling down. But if you consider the fact that uh, last week the shilling touched 95, I think we're doing pretty well seeing the shilling at its current level. And uh, I mean, the central bank is really being pragmatic in its implementation of uh, monetary policy. And they're looking for practical ways to affect both interest rates and uh, the, the exchange rate. And so I think from that perspective, from a liquidity perspective, uh, we expect uh, the shilling to gain some strength of uh, the dollar in the coming two weeks or so. All right, let's talk about other factors that we're seeing at play in the market. Let's talk about the equities. Uh, NBK up 3.8%. What's driving that stock up? I think, uh, I mean, NBK is one of the cheapest uh, stocks in the banking space if you look at it from a PE perspective. And I think uh, right now what we're seeing is that uh, people are looking at the valuations at the Nairobi Stock Exchange and, and realizing that really, I mean, we, the, we have some really ro low valuations, especially from companies like NBK that is selling at a PE of around six, and uh, that is pretty low in the banking space. And we've also seen some activity on the agricultural counters such as Sassini, and uh, I think what we're seeing there is people coming and looking at the P ratios and thinking that this price is undervalued and uh, it's presenting some value right. opportunities for investors. Any comment on the standard group? I mean, that share price is up 9.5%. And people say it's going to continue to be a stellar performer ahead of elections next year. Uh, actually, I mean, we were discussing this last week and uh, stand group, standard group had gained, but it lost the next day. So I think it's really choppy, choppy performance from the counter. I mean, it goes up one day and drops down the same as, as long as, as the same with Transcentury. But I mean, as, as we said, the P ratios uh, for Standard Group are lower. The industry average mm -hmm. is around 13, and it's selling at a P of 8. And I think maybe that's what's driving right. investors to buy this stock. You mentioned Transcentury, and today it's down above 6%. Now, here's the question. People very excited about this company coming to the market. People weren't particularly happy about uh, the introductory price, but nonetheless, they piled into it. And now we're seeing withdrawals and lots of confusion. What's the strategy for investors going into Transcentury? I think investors uh, know that one th for one thing, uh, Transcentury has some really strong fundamentals in terms of the, the investment approach. They're focusing on the industry, electricity, generation and other engineering uh, prospects that have really have uh, a lot of potential for growth in East Africa and the whole of Africa in general. And I think maybe what's happening is really what, what, what market participants have been calling uh, price uh, discovery. Because really, I mean, we, the, the market is still coming to grips into how exactly to value Transcentury. But from a fundamental perspective, from a business perspective, right. uh, we think that it's a really strong counter. But I think the, the movement, chopping movement, is likely to continue on Transcentury. Let's talk about the regulator and the telecom space, the CCK, talking about market power rules, identifying telecom, Kenya, and Safaricom as oligarchs or, you know, having an oligopoly, rather, in the market, dominating the market, and they want to tweak that power. And if uh, they breach the rules, they could be fined. Have investors responded to this, particularly for Safaricom? And uh, not necessarily. I mean, Safari, Safari commas are three shillings and 35 cents as, it, as yesterday. And it has traded, I mean, the, we've not seen any price increments or decreases in the counter. And I think uh, for investors, what they really know is that uh, it's going to be really hard to implement that policy because there's a lot of gray area in terms of uh, what, what really the CCK is saying about this rule that they want to implement. And I think maybe investors are waiting for clear information exactly how 
that will really affect uh, Safaricom and what do, what they consider market power I mean do they have market power I mean what what is the level from which you determine market power is it a 50 percent uh, market power in the industry 60 percent really we don't know yet mm. and I think we're waiting for more clarification from the CCK